All right, this is question 2015, problem five. That means there's no calculator allowed. The figure above is F prime, it's labeled. The derivative is twice differentiable, which means it's continuous. And so is the derivative is continuous. That's what twice differentiable means. There's no issues on either derivative. No breaks, no jaggedness, jaggedness. Um, on the interval, negative 3 to 4 from negative 3 to 4. The graph of F prime has horizontal tangent lines at negative 1, 1, and 3. Can you tell that right there, right there, and right there have slopes of 0? What a horizontal tangent line is saying, you have slopes of 0 there, which is obvious, but in AP questions, they're very detailed. They're writing exactly so you don't question anything. That is exactly where the horizontal asymptotes, or the slopes of zero, are. They're being very, very detailed. The area of the regions bounded by the x-axis and f prime on the intervals negative 2 to 1, so from negative 2 to 1, and 1 to 4, both those intervals are 9 and 12, respectively. So this area right here is 9, and this is 12. Now, the one thing they're not saying is, shouldn't it be negative 9 and negative 12? Are we okay with that? Because they're under the x-axis? So if you were integrating it on this interval, it'd be a negative area. They didn't say that. That's one kind of, kind of weird. But they're just saying respectively, meaning in the same order as they are listed. All righty. So question A. Find all x-coordinates at which f has a relative max. So do you care about minimums? No. We only care about maximums. And we want the x value. So they don't want the coordinate of the max. They just want the relative maximums and give reasons. That's annoying. Reasons are always a little annoying. So let's just find it first and then we'll explain it after. A relative max, so to find this, what we're looking for is we're looking for f prime x equaling zero or does not exist. Isn't that where you have a critical number, where a relative max could happen? So aren't these my critical numbers? Does not exist counts. But should, it, should the derivative never not exist? No, isn't it twice differentiable? So do I have to worry about this one? Because it's twice differentiable, this we could technically ignore because we know the derivative exists always. So we don't have to worry about it. We're looking for where the derivative is 0. So isn't this the derivative graph? Oh, so where is the derivative 0? Well, isn't that going to be right here, right there, and right there? Those three places are critical numbers. So what I would state here is at x equals negative 2, 1, and 4 are critical numbers, which are possible, possible relative maxes. How do we tell if one of those is a relative max? Well, a relative max should change slopes from positive to negative. And aren't these slope values? Isn't this a slope value graph? So where are the values of this graph changing from positive to negative? So over this dot, do the values of the graph change from positive to under the x-axis negative? So would this one be a relative max? Why, yes, it is. How about this one? No, it went from negative values uh, to more negative values. That's nothing. That's not even a min. Got it? That's nothing. Neither right, max nor min. How about this one? Uh, we don't know the other side. We don't know enough for sure to tell what's happening. So we cannot claim this because we do not know what's changing on the other side. So my answer is only here. That's my relative max. Because f prime changed from positive to negative. So my answer to this one is at x equals negative 2. It's negative 2. And my justification, well, can't this be part of my justification? Let's continue this. This is my beginning. You have to have the starting point, saying they're critical numbers. Now we have to give it a middle to max justification by defining 
what is a relative max? And a relative max, we said earlier, is why do I know x equals negative 2 is a relative max? Because f prime changes from positive um, to negative. Now that is actually, I probably should have rewrote that a different way. Using it changes from positive to negative, we got to be careful. Um, actually, that, that is good enough. That is, when you look at the scoring guidelines, that is actually what they say. You might also want to say that the values of f prime change from greater than zero to less than zero. That's also another way of saying it, but from positive to negative. The key is f prime. You have to say f prime. If you just say it or that thingy or f, you, you, you have to say what it is changing. F prime is changing from positive to negative. Thus, that is why it is this is a relative max. So, B, on what open interval between, for the graph we see, um, are, is F both concave down and decreasing? Ooh, two things, concave down and decreasing. Explain yourself. Another... Give reasons. All right, let's first find it and then go from there. If I went decreasing, isn't that, if I'm saying decreasing, isn't decreasing when F prime is what? Negative or less than zero? What is concave down? Isn't that F double prime is what? Concave down is also less than zero or negative. So aren't we looking for the graph where these two stipulations are true? So where are our slopes negative and our graph zero? Because remember, this is F prime graph, right? So isn't this really saying where's our graph zero? Sorry, negative. Where's our graph negative and where's our slopes negative? So where in this graph are the slopes negative and the graph negative? So let's say this interval. The slopes are negative, right? But the values aren't. Okay, let's go to the next interval right here. Are the slopes negative and the values negative? So are we okay that this right here, we can tell the slopes are negative and the values are negative? So let's keep going. For this, the slopes are positive, so let's ignore it. Are the slopes negative and the values negative? Why, yes, they are. So I have another spot where the slopes are negative and the value is negative. And here, the values are negative, but the slopes aren't. So do you see your two intervals? Our answer is going to be, and the answer is open intervals. Got it? So we're going from negative 2 to negative 1. Does that look right? And from 1 to 3. Now, could you use interval notation as well? You don't have to use, you can use interval notation if you wanted, but that is the answer. Now, we have to justify ourselves. It's always annoying. I always like to say justify to the end because I'm always wondering if I'm completely saying it good. So, we said it already verbally, right? So, let's write it. Um, are these two important to our justification? Okay, because we have these two pieces of information, what we're looking for is for these two intervals, so for those two intervals, so from negative two to negative 1, that's an interval, oops, that's negative 1, and from 1 to 3, f prime is less than 0, oops, that line's not supposed to be there, uh, let's see, can I erase that, let's do that again, so that would be f prime is less than, sorry, f double prime is less than 0, and f prime is less than 0. Is that a justification? Is, it, is that what we're looking for? We're looking for those two things, and that, yeah, that works. So this is the interval, same as these, and those are the justifications. So it is kind of, we just justify it. Um, we could probably go a little bit deeper. You can look at your FRQs from the AP Central to see what they say to get more detail. Actually, there's one more thing I should say. What are these in terms of the graph? Okay, for the graph, this part is saying, what was this again? This was the... Slope of the graph was negative. 
So the slope, so the graph was decreasing. So the graph was decreasing here. For this piece, the graph was decreasing. And for this piece, what's it saying? The graph values are negative. So those are two stipulations. I, would, I, would, I did not write this very clearly. You might want to write it in since it's a little bit clearer for theirs. And you'd see how to write it by looking at the F or Qs. Next question, C. Find the x-coordinate of all points of inflections, P of I's, and give reasons. So a point of inflection, for giving reasons, let's just work on that as we go here. Uh, P of I, so a P of I, point of inflection, are going to be what? Well, let's think, for a P of I, what are we looking for? We're looking for F prime, F double prime, X equaling what? Zero. Zero. Do we worry about does not exist? No, because it says it's differentiable, double differentiable. So you don't have to worry about that one. And what else do we want? And F double prime changes signs. So those are the two stipulations. I want the F double prime is 0, and F double prime changes signs. So let's look at our graph. Where do you see the graph... Wait, as an F double prime means slopes? Do I want their slope are zero and the slopes change? So let's look. Isn't the slope zero there? Wasn't it defined here in the statement right there? So slope zero there, did it, did it change slopes? Did the slope values change? Yeah, did the slope values change? Did the slope values change? So are all three of those points of inflections. Are they all three points of inflection? And the answer is yes, they are. So how do we, where does it say that, uh, give reasons for our answers? Well, we, this is our first part of our reason. Okay, actually first let's list them all. So it would be negative 1, it would be 1, and it would be 3. Those are our points of inflections. This is problem C, just a reminder. All right, so our reasons is because of this. Now, how do we explain that? Well, at each one, at each value, you have a slope of 0, and each value, the slopes change. So let's say something like that. So at each of these values, the slope of f prime equals 0, and the slope changes sign, and then the slope of f prime. We probably put f prime because that's what's changing. So the slope is 0, and the slope changes signs over the x value. All right. Hopefully that works for you. For this last question, given that f of 1 is 3, write an expression, f of x, that involves an integral for f of 1 and f of negative 2. And then find f of 4 and f of negative 2. Uh, sorry for the error. Okay. So let's write a function first. All right, write an expression for f of x involving integral. So f of x, here's the function, is going to equal, well, you're starting at 3. So if you think about it, right there, at 1, your value is 3. But aren't you, as you go this way, aren't you adding value? This is a derivative. So if you're adding change, isn't it changing as you go this way? And, and a derivative is change. So aren't you going to sum the change? And isn't the change 12, a negative 12? Got to be careful because it's under the x-axis. So what's going to happen here is you have 3 plus from 1 to some number, you are going to, the change, the functions, f of f prime t, dt. All right. Why do we choose t and dt? Just as a letter, because I have x here, because x is going to jump in. 
Okay, because that could be any letter. We just chose T. So you're starting at 3, and the change from 1 to some value of the f prime function will give us our new value. That is the expression. Now the second part of the equation is how do you find f of 4 and f of negative 2? You simply plug negative 4 there and negative 2 there. So f of 4 is going to be 3 plus the integral of 1, 2, 4 of f prime t dt. Now, what is this equal to? That number right there. Isn't it from 1 to 4, the area? But it's negative. So what we have here for this problem is this would be 3 plus a negative 12, which is negative 9. And that would make sense, because if we're starting here, at 1 we have 3. Aren't we dropping 12? A change of negative 12, so you drop 12, so you get negative 9 value. So for the last problem here, I want f of negative 2. It's the same idea. So it's 3 plus the integral from 1 to negative 2, f prime t dt. Now what's interesting, the integral is backwards. So let's rewrite that. That's actually going to be 3 minus the integral from negative 2 to 1. We have to switch the interval to go from lowest to highest. That, let me make sure you cut that. Because we were going from highest to lowest, we need to go from lowest to highest, so you just make a negative instead of a plus. All right. So what we're doing here is the answer to this one would be 3 minus, and the area for this interval is right here, 9, or negative 9. So when you minus a negative 9, what's 3 minus negative 9? That is equal to 3 plus 9, which is 12. So you answer that one's 12. Now that's kind of confusing, but whenever you're going backwards, you're doing the opposite. So that was a negative 9, so you're going to minus a negative 9. It's kind of weird. So this way you're accumulating negative amounts, um, and this way you're going backwards. It, it's just easiest to write the function and see it this way because the thinking backwards is a little tricky time at times. So here's the function, and you plug in the numbers for the last two pieces. Good luck on the AP test.